Hi, and welcome to Guitar Economics. In this video here, I'm going to talk to you about some of the most common mistakes that I have seen guitarists making over the last 20 years. This is whether you play classical guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, that doesn't really matter. I'm going to take you to my website, Pass Guitar, and go through the main points so you can see what you shouldn't do, and I'll give you some ideas about to what you can do. In addition, I'll also make a reference to my YouTube channel, Guitar Economics, so you can check out some of our videos there. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now is we're going to look at this page here called Most Common Mistakes. So first of all, the guitarist adopts the body to the instrument and not the instrument to the body, which results in poor posture, pain, and the development of injuries. This is a really common mistake that a lot of guitar players are making. So what you need to make sure is that you adopt the instrument to your body. What I mean by that is that you don't bend over your instrument, that you don't drop your head to look at your hands and fingers, but that you have a length and spine facing outwards as much as possible. This is something that I see all the time and it's quite common amongst guitarists. So make sure that you, for example, are using your phone to record yourself or use a mirror so you can check that you don't do that. Lack of understanding of the primary control, the head, the neck and the back, and how to apply this concept when practicing and performing and teaching. The primary control is a concept that comes from the Alexander technique and it's the relationship between your head, neck and the back. When I'm playing, practicing and performing, I actually think about this almost all the time. So I try and think about lengthening my spine so that I don't bend the spine and that my head is balancing on top of my uh, neck and uh, down in the back. This is really, really important because it gives you uh, freedom of movement and you can avoid uh, back pain in particular. It's also important when you're teaching because students, they will cover you consciously or subconsciously. So make sure that you correct that posture when you're teaching them and that your posture is perfect when you're teaching as well. The head is dropped forward and constantly turned towards the fretting hand. Drop the eyes instead. This is really common that guitarists just drop their head over the instrument to see what they're doing. It's not a good idea because the head is actually quite heavy. And if you drop it, you cause a lot of strain on your neck and your back, which can lead to a lot of uh, back pain. So by all means, turn your head to one side or the other. And then if you want to look at the fretboard, drop your eyes instead. Lack of warm up and cool down. This is of course really essential. The guitar is a very physical instrument. It's a very physical thing to do to play the guitar. So you've got to make sure that your body is warmed up and that you cool down afterwards. There are loads of body strengthening exercises you can do and do them in between all your practicing sessions as well. It's going to make you feel a lot better. Practice sessions are too long with lack of attention to body feedback, resulting in an increase in pain and fatigue. Mental awareness is decreased, resulting in poor outcomes. This is really important. And long practice sessions for me would be 10 minutes. I normally just practice three or four minutes at a time and then I take a break. And then I reflect over what I have been practicing and whether I was successful or not. If you are practicing for a long, long time without any breaks, there is a chance that you actually use your ability to be aware of what's going on in your practicing and in your body and that you're not even listening to what you're doing. So keep an eye on how long you're practicing for. Lack of goal setting for each practice session equals poor achievement. This is really important. Before you start practicing, say to yourself, what is it actually I want to learn today? What's my goal? And then check in with yourself and make sure that you have achieved that goal. After your practice session, think about it, reflect over and see what did I do well? What didn't I do so well? And what could I do better? No real understanding of how to measure progress. This is very, very important when you're learning a new piece of music, for example. So you've got to make sure that you have a way of checking your progress because what you cannot measure, you can't control. So you could actually be practicing for hours on end without making any progress really. So make sure that you're keeping an eye out on your progress and be self-critical about that. Too many repetition when practicing, especially scales and difficult bars. There is a tendency among some, among some guitar players 
to do endless repetitions when practicing. This is not necessary at all. Make sure that you're only repeating a difficult passage, for example, a few times, and then stop and reflect over your progress and think about what you have achieved and what you haven't achieved and what you could do better. This is really, really important. And on my YouTube channel, you will see there is a video called Visual Practicing. So how to visualize instead of actually playing the instrument and also shadow practicing. And that will be really helpful for you to look at that, see what you can learn from that, because you will actually learn to play and practice and learn a piece of music much, much faster without these endless repetitions. The guitar is too big compared to the size of the player. This is really important. If you are a smaller person or if you are a child, you should make sure that you have a guitar that fits you. So maybe a three quarter guitar is much better. What you want to avoid is overextending, particularly off the right arm over the guitar body, if you are a right-handed guitar player. So make sure that the guitar has the right size for you. Too many hours spent typing on laptop PC, which equals uh, poor posture. So this is really important because obviously today we use laptops and so on in our work also as musicians, but make sure that you're not sitting hour after hour uh, working on your laptop again with a poor posture. So again, think about the head, your neck and your back and relationship between them when you are doing that and take plenty of breaks. Poor breathing technique. This is the foundation of all living is good breathing. So make sure that you have a good breathing technique. I have a video on my YouTube channel where you can see how to develop a really good breathing technique. It's also important when you're practicing and performing. For example, if you suffer from performance anxiety, then you need to make sure that you're working on your breathing. But also, if you're playing something that maybe is difficult and you then notice you're holding your breath as you're doing that, that's something you need to work on and to avoid because it's obviously important that you have plenty of oxygen and good breathing while you are playing the guitar. So a couple of things about classical guitar, and in this case, uh, I've written it if you are a right-handed player. The guitar being held and balanced by the right and left arm instead of the legs and the right side of the body, when, for example, using a footstool. The upper body does not need to be involved in balancing the guitar. If you check out my video on that, on my channel, Guitar Economics, you can see that I can balance the guitar without actually using my upper body so that my shoulders and right and left arm and the head are totally free when I'm playing the classical guitar. So have a look at that and see if that works for you. Left hand, lack of understanding that the hand, wrist, arm, shoulder, and back should work as a single unit to ensure that the larger muscles are used and not the smaller ones. This is really, really fundamental to good left hand technique so that you're not just thinking about your fingers, but that you really think about this whole single unit when you're playing and that you're using the larger muscles from the back and the arm to move around with your left hand on the guitar. No understanding on the concept of partial relaxation. So what that means is basically that when you are not using a finger or some fingers, they should be relaxed. They should just be hovering over the fretboard and ready to be used when they are needed the next time. So partial relaxation where some muscles group are in action, so to speak, and others are not, are really key for saving energy and for playing with freedom of movement. Left hand hyperflexion leading to pain in the hand, wrist, arm, and back. This is very, very common, unfortunately, uh, in guitarists. And I really want you to make sure that you don't do that, that you don't bend in your left hand wrist. When you present it onto the fretboard, keep it as straight as possible. I know there are some situations where this is not possible, but then once you have made that movement to reach a certain amount of frets maybe, then cancel that movement and come back to a more natural hand position where the wrist is as flat as possible. Left hand, uh, too much pressure in the thumb, increasing pain and lack of freedom in the left hand. The role of the thumb is actually that of a shadow that simply just follows the hand wherever it goes on the fretboard. It's only in some situations, for example, when we play bar chords, that the thumb has a much more active role. So I don't really use my thumb very much. It just follows the hand on the fretboard. 
and what I use instead are the muscles from my arm and back to present the hand onto the fretboard. It doesn't really matter whether your thumb sticks up above the fretboard. That's absolutely fine. It just needs to sit where it sits naturally with your hand. So that depends on the size of your hand and fingers, of course. Left hand far too extended away from the body to reach first position due to wrongly balanced guitar. This is really common that sometimes the guitar neck is so far away that you really have to stretch out your left hand to reach the first position. So you need to experiment with that and find just the right position of the guitar for you when you're playing the classic guitar. Grabbing up the fretboard resulting in pain and lack of freedom of movement. This is very common as well. So you might see the guitar is grabbing with the left hand, uh, particularly if they're a bit nervous. Make sure you don't do that, but that you really have a relaxed left hand presented on to the fretboard when you're playing and practicing. Right hand, the right arm is fixed on the guitar body resulting in pain and lack of movement and hyperflexion of the wrist. This is something you really, really need to be careful about when you're playing where you actually have your right hand. My right hand is not fixed anywhere on the guitar body because I don't hold the guitar with my right arm. Hyperflexion of the hand resulting in pain and lack of freedom of movement. Another thing you need to be very careful about, make sure that your wrist is as flat as possible when you come in on the guitar and when you are plucking the strings. Planting your finger, especially the thumb, in the right hand and certainly also in the left hand, be careful about planting the fingers. It may seem to you that it's an easier way to play the guitar because you get a certain amount of contact with the strings in the right hand, but don't make it a technique that you rely on because it stops freedom of movement. And that's a real problem, for example, when you're playing arpeggios. Use a rest stroke resulting in lack of freedom of movement. Use the free stroke only. I don't use the rest stroke at all when I play classical guitar. So I would suggest to you that you only use the free stroke and I'm going to put a video up on my website to show you how to do that. Electric guitar is right-handed. Similar to the above opening and poor playing and practicing position sitting on the bed and sofa. There are so many guitar players who do that and it is not good for your posture at all. If you're thinking about the relationship between your head, your neck, and your spine, you can see that this is not a good idea because you may slouch over your instrument. So make sure you don't practice on your bed or sofa, but sit on a proper chair that gives you really good support. The strap is too thin, so it cuts into the shoulder when standing up with the guitar. This is another problem. So when you are standing up, practicing with the guitar, which by the way, is my favorite way of practicing electric guitar, and you can see how I do that on my YouTube channel, make sure the strap is not too thin, but it's really well padded so it supports the guitar well when you're holding the guitar like that. Left hand, use your thumb, over the guitar neck and onto the fretboard, resulting in development of pain. A lot of guitar players use this technique. And I would say to you, if you are using this technique, keep an eye on what it does to your left hand, because it's a rather unnatural way of using your hand. So yes, by all means, you can use that technique where you use the thumb to play certain notes on the sixth string, but make sure it doesn't cause any pain. For getting to the relaxed left hand after string bending, and come back to natural position of the hand onto the fretboard. This is really important. So when we are bending strings using the left hand on the fretboard, we often also have to involve the thumb. So that's quite a lot of effort that goes on to do that. When you have finished bending the string, come back to as natural as possible position with your left hand. And again, check out one of my videos on how I do that. Right hand, little finger attached with the guitar body as a means of contact point. This is not a good idea. And I would really suggest that you avoid doing that because what happens is you get lack of freedom of movement of your right hand and it is attached to the guitar body, which doesn't obviously add anything to your musical performance. Make sure your right hand is totally free and that the fingers are just naturally curved when you're playing the guitar. Holding the plectrum too tight in the right hand. This is very common as well. No need to do that. Just find out how much pressure do you need, for example, between your thumb and your index finger when you're holding your uh, plectrum and stick to that. Over rotation of the wrist when using a plectrum, that's another problem I see that the wrist is over rotated instead of just being naturally flat. So make sure that you don't have that because it can cause a lot of pain 
in your wrist and your arm when playing. Wrist bending inwards, touching the guitar body as means of a contact point. So that's another problem where the right hand wrist is bending inwards towards the guitar body and maybe even onto the strings. Again, this is not a good idea because it creates pain and lack of freedom of movement in your right hand. And finally, poor finger picking technique. This is something I see quite common in self-taught electric guitarists. It can really help learning to develop a classical guitar technique for the right hand. So you have complete freedom of movement when you are uh, finger picking uh, on the guitar. I've got a video uh, on my YouTube channel where you can see how I use finger picking technique on electric guitar. And you should check that out. So this is a short overview over some of the most common mistakes I've seen amongst guitarists, which I've been treating for the last 20 years. Make sure that you avoid doing any of these. And if you're doing some of these, work on them one by one. And you're more than welcome to contact me for lessons so I can help you getting a secure guitar technique that will allow you plenty of freedom of movement so you can play without pain and getting maximum efficiency through minimum effort. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.